Hi, my brothers and sisters in Jesus. I uh, just landed in San Diego, got in the hotel here, and um, I wanted to release a video, but I also wanted to release a teaching today that is going to be so important for people who are seeking to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord and so on. And um, there are so many teachings on this, that's great, but I want to focus on one thing that really helped me, and maybe it'll help you. So in 1 Samuel 3, we see... Uh, something that uh, really talks about how maybe we're at sometimes where it says um, so it says the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli and then listen this is the important part it says in those days the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions so does that sound familiar you, you want to hear but you're not hearing and so on and 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 so how did that come about well for us in our personal lives um, you know maybe we're not doing the things we should and spending the time with the Lord or doing all these different things and so on. So let's just see how, how it plays out here. So, um, so and, and, and we have to do a little bit of backstory here. So we also know that Eli was letting his sons do all kinds of horrible things and uh, there's even prostitution going on right near, uh, right beside the temple uh, and so on. And it was just horrible stuff going on. And, uh, and, and so Eli wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He wasn't, uh, and, and so because of that, we see uh, that uh, a lot of things, actually it's very prophetic. Listen to the next, the next part here. It says, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see. So isn't that interesting? He could barely see, and there aren't many visions in the land under his care as high priest. And it says, um, Anyway, it says he was lying down in his usual place, and it says the lamp God had not yet gone out. Now, wait a minute, guys. He's also not supposed to ever let the lamp of God go out. He's supposed to be tending it day and night. So, again, another problem. And then another problem comes up. Check this out. Many people don't pick up on this, guys. You might be shocked when you, when you read this next part, okay? Even though you're sure you heard the story, check this out, okay? It says... Um, uh, the lamp had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Guys, where is the ark of God kept in the temple? Where? In the Holy of Holies. Wasn't it that only a priest could go in once a year in there? And here we find that under Eli's care, Samuel is just going in and laying down. So Eli wasn't taking care of anything. And so because of his disrespect and disregard for God, the word of the Lord was rare in the land, and um, and there were not many visions, and his eyes had grown weak and barely see. Well, you can see why, right? So what's the solution? Well, the solution is key here. It's actually kind of hidden in plain sight. It says that Eli was laying down in his usual place. But Samuel's lying down in the house of the Lord. Now, Samuel's a kid, and he works and lives in the temple, and there's a usual place for Eli to be. But I have a feeling that, and we don't know, but I have a feeling that uh, Samuel is in the, wasn't the first time that Samuel did this. Samuel was hungry for God, and so he lied down by the Ark of the Covenant. Imagine, why would you do that? You're like... I know what I'll do today. I'm going to go, and I'm going to go and sneak into the Holy of Holies and just lay down by the Ark of the, the Covenant because I want to get close to God. It was his desire to be in the Lord's presence that opened up everything for him. And, I, and so um, in my life, I had the same experience. For two weeks, I was captivated. The Holy Spirit just highlighted the Scripture to me. And I was just laying down... And the Ark of the Covenant, you know, I was I just laying down by the feet of Jesus. That's all I would do is just say, Jesus, I'm just lying down here at your feet. And I close my eyes and, and just lay on the carpet. I, I call it carpet time, guys. That's my time with Jesus. I lay on the carpet and spend time with him. I, I do that because I like to be humble. And I show that to God by getting as low as I possibly can, humbling myself to get in and, and so that I can just be in his presence. And uh, I don't know why that is, but it just seems like the right thing to do in a in the presence of a holy God but anyway so 
I'm laying there, and for two weeks I did that, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden one day, I didn't get the sense of sight uh, that we, or sorry, or the sense of hearing, uh, but I got, and some people get sight and different senses. You'll get different, you get different. Uh, Ability. Some people are naturally seers and they'll see. Some people can hear or auditory people and they'll hear. Uh, for me, I guess I'm a smeller because I was laying down. All of a sudden, I could smell this smell like it sounded like it smelled like after the rain and an incense smell kind of mixed together. And we don't do that in our house. Never have. So I I jumped up out of the bed. Uh, at that time, I was laying in a bed, actually, now I remember. Um, so normally, I'm on the carpet. This time, I was laying on a bed. Anyway, so I jumped up out of the bed, and um, and I went to see what was going on. Why was there smoke smell in the house? And it wasn't there. And so I thought, oh, that's weird. So I went and lay down again. And then the same thing happened a few minutes later. And I was like, wow, what's going on? And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, since you've been laying down, and concentrating on being, just laying down in the presence of God, thinking about what it would be like to lay by the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. You've been laying at the feet of Jesus, and uh, and so you just began to smell a bit of heaven. And uh, so that was like my first understanding of any of that. And then from that, eventually came hearing and uh, other senses. But that was the first sense I got. But the key here, guys, is laying down in the presence of God, going after Him, and just being with Him. And so it's not something uh, most people want, you know, we live in a fast food McDonald's culture where we just want to say, okay, this is how you hear from the Lord. Do this, boom, 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 and you're going to hear. And there are some teachings like that, but I'm not quite sure if people are actually hearing from the Lord uh, in those teachings because it's like, okay, just lay down and, and a picture comes in your mind and that's God showing us stuff I don't know but I know for me um, when I hear from God it's uh, the presence of God is so strong and I can tell it's him you can the Bible says my sheep know my voice and you have to learn to know the Lord the words the word of the Lord and when he says something it happens that's another key thing in the Old Testament guys if you said something and it wasn't from God <laughs> uh, nowadays it's a little softer but uh, but it's important, guys, that we are actually hearing from God and listening to God and learning His voice. So to do that, you can't skip the part that uh, Samuel learned of just being hungry for the presence of God, spending time with Him and in Him and, and just being with Him. And then all of a sudden, uh, in that presence, the gifts of God uh, in terms of being able to see and hear and so on, uh, those things are released and uh, many many prophets have been born in, in the presence of God uh, and you know that's according to the will of the Holy Spirit he gives those gifts to whoever he wants but it's just like the gift of healing or anything else it, Paul even says desire the greater gifts so if you want to go after something in God you just need to position yourself and go after it and for me one of the secrets was just spending time in the Lord's presence and I know other people may have just got the gift some people just get like that's their gift and they just get it right away and that's great they can hear from day one they hear the Lord talking to them other people especially some people who have been brought up in the church but maybe um, haven't I find this a lot for me this was my story that I, I had compromise in my life and I was trying to live in the church and in the world back before these days started and so God had to do like he did. Uh, I was like Eli, and I didn't see many, I didn't see any visions, not many visions. And uh, my eyes were growing weak because I, cause I, I, I had compromise in my life. But when I got serious with God and I went after his presence, that's when, by you know, lying by the Ark of the Covenant, lying at the feet of Jesus, that's when my eyes open and my ears open and my nose open so uh, that's a weird one I know but I have to tell it like it is guys so God bless and I hope this helps you hey guys I almost forgot to introduce uh, this video coming up uh, and it's really great so we were actually praying uh, uh, for someone and uh, we had kick-started someone and during that time they had seen a number of great miracles but the last miracle of the day didn't happen we prayed for the guy that you're gonna see in this video and nothing happened okay and uh, we didn't shoot a video so guys maybe 
20 percent i don't know 15 20 30 percent max ever make video not even i'm sure it's less than that uh, but anyway, so we're out there doing it, and so we pray for this guy, nothing happened, guys. And I want to encourage you for the people who have been in that situation. But God had a plan, and so two weeks later, in this video you'll see, uh, we were planning to go to the United States, and I had to meet Odette uh, on this side of the border, on the Canadian side, and we said, oh, let's just meet at the McDonald's. And so uh, as I pull in, uh, who, and I was late, by the way, as I pull in, guess who should be there? But uh, Odette was sitting at a, a table waiting for me outside. It was a warm day. And uh, this guy walks up, and he's the same guy. We didn't even recognize him at first. And he's like, hey, I know you guys. And actually, he knows Odette. And then he said to me, he knew me. Anyway, so, uh, and then he introduced himself as we had prayed for him, and nothing had happened. Uh, but he, was, he said, for 20 years, he had never... He has not uh, gone to Canada, come through Canada, but he had to go somewhere and he decided to go the Canadian route uh, through to Buffalo, I think he said what it was. Anyway, so he was there by, there's no coincidence, coincidences with God, I call it a God incidence. So it was a God incidence and uh, so we knew it was God. So guess what, we prayed for him again and you'll see in the video he was miraculously healed by God. Hey, it's Doug here, and I'm here with Odette, and uh, Mayo. Mayo, Mayo, we're calling him Mighty Mayo is his new name. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got you in the uh, sun. Okay, so, so Odette, go ahead. I'll just say what happened. Yes. Um, two Thursdays ago, we were in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, doing our usual thing, praying for the sick and uh, preaching the gospel, and uh, we happened to bump into Mayo when we were leaving. But today, Doug and I were meeting at the McDonald's uh, on Huron Church Line, just to go over the border. And Doug was late, so I was sitting reading my Bible and I was praying, Lord, send me a person of peace, send me someone. And then I look over and there's this guy right here, walking across the parking lot and he looked like he was in pain. And I didn't recognize him from two weeks ago because we encounter so many people. But he said, how are you doing? And I said, good. I said, come here, are you in pain? And then he said yeah, so we started to talk and then Doug showed up uh, late and we met him two weeks ago. The guy's never been in Canada for 20 years. The Holy Spirit was telling him this morning okay, to wait, take the let's Canadian hear. Okay, yeah, you tell, to Buffalo. Tell, let him tell you. Crazy. Well, okay, I knew I was coming to Buffalo to pick up a friend and we actually going to Baltimore. But in my mind, I didn't know whether to go, uh, Michigan, go, to go through the unit. United States or take the the, the, the Canadian route. Yeah, the can can because it's a that is a shorter and 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 in my mind I see the Holy Spirit kept telling me just go to Canada. I don't think I was gonna get you know I'll go through a lot of stuff, but anyway, make it short. I, the Holy Spirit came over and he told me to come to Canada. And when I came here, I seen this beautiful young lady, and then I remember this young man. I didn't remember her, but I remember me. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Who is late by coincidence, and I'm not usually late, by the way. <laughs> and, and they they prayed for me again, and I think that I was the reason I kept him here because I think the Holy Spirit wanted me to be here at this time, and I I re received his prayers that he had for me and, and so, my healing. So one of your legs was one of your legs was shorter than the other by yeah. about oh, this much, where that is a quarter inch or so. Yes. Um, and uh, you watched it. What happened yes. while you're while we we're praying? During the time that it, it's, it's, uh, it was evening, it was evening. It was uh, off, but now it's, it's meeting. It's meeting evening. evening. Yeah, yeah. It, so it, mean, it was off. Now I'm it's excited, meeting. Evening. So I got to I got to start walking now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's try walking. Let's let's give it a walk and see what happens. Well, you're definitely walking more even. Better. Yeah. I, I don't feel no pain right now. Really. You don't feel any pain. Right. Okay. And I had some earlier. Too. So. Thank you, Lord. So, how long have you been in pain? Oh, oh man, stand I'm, this going, way. I'm, going through, I'm going through uh, physical therapy, and I had to go to the doctor. And because you were hobbling across the parking lot when I saw you. Yeah. When you went into go to the washroom, you were like doing one of it's one been, of. You were kind of shuffling along. It's been it's been it's been hurting me for a long time. So. And I. No. I 
we must say as well that when we met him two Thursdays ago, we prayed for him and prayed for him. Yes. He didn't feel any difference. Yes. And so we don't know why, but we keep going. And today the Lord brought him here. But obviously it's a divine connection. He wants us to stay in touch, right? It's more yeah. than just this. Yeah. Yes. Because it's, it's that, pretty obvious. Yeah. And, and so guys, if you pray for someone and they don't get healed, God may send them to you a second time like this, and this time he's getting healed. So, awesome. Praise Jesus. Yes. He is awesome in all ways. Uh, and I want our little catchphrase instead of TBC yeah. to be continued. Love must be sincere. Love, love must be sincere. I love that. Motivated by love. Yes.